turn on the torch, light up the flame, time to melt some glass, my friends. There you are, here I am to explain, to teach, and create again. I'm going to do this really quick. I just did that one. I just threw it over, but it's still okay. Uh, I did a... a uh, all right, graceful. A frog made out of one disc, just nipped it in about two places, tufted it out the front legs, and used a... a... Uh, detailing knife to shape the back legs on it instead of pulling them and folding them like I usually do but that's just the way life is okay we're going to do uh, let's see if we can make it small enough oh this will work better excuse me cleaning off the dicro just a little bit mine is just a big pile of anyway odds and ends pieces that I got a long, long time ago. And hey, it possesses the work, and I get good results out of it. I'm excited. What I'm doing, again, is I'm making it so that it will stamp down basically on top of the dichro. And you saw that dichro is nice and cold, and the glass is nice and warm. <laughs> one of the little tricks I do and it does give you pretty good results if you've never played with Dicro before. I got a little bit of something on the surface of the glass. There we go. Heat it press. Let's do this one more time and this time I'm going to press it into the Dicro. Nice and glowing. Press it right up there. There we go. And I heat it up the back side again and press it in. And the surface is now sandwiched in and less chance of you burning it the way I just did that. Away from the actual fire so that you can get pretty good results. Okay. Now what I usually do after that is, again, just coat the back of the dichro with a color. A color that you like and you want to be standing throughout the piece, I guess you could say. Now we're going to uh, round that to the edge of the die crow, basically. Heat and press a little bit. There we go. Now, I'm going to cut this off of the uh, punte here. Basically, I pinch it a little bit as I go along and thin it out so it doesn't have a big impression, but it does leave something there. There we go. And I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a nice sparkly, glittery shine going on in there. And that's what the die crow is all about. All that glitters, people will pay the gold for. Right, right. Okay, this is basically where I'm melting it and rounding it in so I can start using it. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit because it's going to end up being stretched anyway. This is just an interesting idea that somebody gave me and it led me to do that frog that's there in front of you. And now I'm going to try to do another little something. Right. Getting some contaminating the glass there. Okay. Okay. We're going to nip this in about 
two to three places, right? Right. We're going to nip it about here. Nip it the same place on the other side. Looks like a very neat fish at the moment. That's pretty cool. And I could probably stop with that and make it into a fish. Um, which I will put on the beginner's page so that people can see that. But I'm not leaving it as a fish. This goes into the next, well, not really the next level, but still dealing with it some more. Now I'll nip it on this side. At the top. Do that again. Who thought to use wire cutters, right? Or if you had a pair of surgical scissors, that'll do the job too. Okay. Now we're going to try to nip these at these little this one in half. I can hold on to it. There we go. Do it again on this side. Yep. Now let's stretch these out. That's the thing about glass, it likes to fuse back together. It helps to make sure that it's unfused. You don't want to get it too confusing. <laughs> okay. Looking good so far. Now it's getting these other ones looking good. That's one thing about working with a disc. <laughs> Instead of adding to a disc or making things work out that way, but that's the way I'm working this to give you uh, inspiration to go out and do what you want to do. Okay, I think it's working. You may not see it yet, but I think it's working. we go. It's going to be very simple, very basic. Just using one basic, two, well, two basic tweezers and pliers, huh? Who knew? Hold it on this side. Yeah, now we can work on this end. It looks like I burnt some of the dichro. At least it gives you an idea of what you can do. Oops. 
Okay, I'm gonna pull that off. I need all of it anyway. That's why you usually do it the other way. I have to remember that. Yeah, add the die crow on afterwards. Simple. That didn't work. Although, that's a nice lizard style. I'll have to figure that out. Nice lizard style. Let's try that. I like this idea. It's a little bit more crazy, but doable. It was originally going to be a dragonfly. But you gotta work with it sometimes. When you it's not working the way you think it's gonna work. You gotta use your imagination and say, how can I fix this to make it into something that somebody would want to buy? I can even put more toes on it because it got bigger. There we go. Three toed sloth. No, three toed lizard. I like this. I'm glad you thought of it. Gotta get that leg from underneath that toe there. I mean that that leg from underneath the front leg there. Put a little loop on his. I like him. New style. Glad you thought of it. The bail. Again, I usually do a question mark and then just let it slump down into itself. And then bring it together. Fuse it in. There we go. I'm going to work on the tail end and stretch it out and curl it a little bit. Oops. 
And actually, yeah. I like this new style. I'm glad you thought of it. I really am. I say that to the person that was thinking of it. As they were, as it was coming out to be almost a crappy dragonfly, it came into being as a an interesting lizard creature. Changing shape before your eyes. I like it. Beautiful. Nasty beautiful. Come on. There we go. And we have one sparkly, glittery, diachroic wizard, new style. As always, thanks for watching. Carpe vitro, and enjoy your day.